There's thousands of videos on YouTube about hunting dangerous game and traveling to Africa. But one thing lacking is a good source of information for the hunter preparing for their first ever hunt with a big bore bolt action rifle. Preparing a big bore rifle for your first hunt can be a daunting task, mainly due to the lack of information out there. So in this video, I'll attempt to walk you through the basics of getting a big bore bolt action rifle ready at home before you board your flight to your hunting destination. After you book your first ever buffalo hunt to Africa, the next thing you need to do is get a rifle, get it dialed in, and practice a lot. In essence, that's what this video is really all about. If you watch guys like Mark Sullivan too much, you'll be convinced that you need some expensive double rifle to kill buffalo. In reality, probably just the opposite is true for the first time hunter. Uh, big board double rifles are fantastic for stopping a charge at close range, you know, and that's pretty much what Mark Sullivan does or prefers to do. But they have huge recoil, limited ammo capacity, uh, the ammo is super expensive and hard to acquire, they're less accurate, they don't mount optics well, they're exceedingly expensive, and they take an entirely different skill set to master than the common bolt action rifle that everybody's used to. For these reasons, a good controlled round feed bolt action rifle is the perfect tool for somebody to take on the first buffalo hunt. In fact, for the client, it's probably the best tool for the job, regardless of how experienced you are. The first thing you need to do is get a suitable rifle for dangerous game hunting. I think it's pretty well established that a controlled round feed bolt action rifle is pretty much the right tool for the job. So take a good look at the Winchester Model 70 like this one, or a, uh, a CZ 550 Safari Express, a Ruger Hawkeye African, a Kimber Caprivi, or you know the uh, Montana or Dakota rifle. You know they have danger. They you know they offer rifles chambered in dangerous game cartridges. They have controlled round feed, and you know they have established reputations in places like Africa and Alaska. So what exactly is a big bore? A big bore means many different things to many different people. Historically, a big bore rifle is any rifle over 40 caliber that's suitable for dangerous game. Over the years, the definition has basically branched into two schools of thought. The first school consists of uh, diehard double rifle proponents, and they believe that a big bore is a rifle over 45 caliber. The second and more modern understanding, usually espoused by European hunters, is that anything over 9.63 or 375 caliber is a big bore. Personally, I agree with the classic interpretation and I don't really consider anything under 40 caliber to be considered a big bore. But because the 375 is so commonly used for dangerous game, I'm going to include it in this video anyway. The 375 and 9.63 by 62 is universally recommended as a minimum for ethically hunting Cape Buffalo. In the hands of an inexperienced hunter or somebody who's very recoil sensitive, there is no reason to look past the 375. With a perfectly placed shot, the 375 will kill a big bull with little effort. You know, if things get hairy, your pH will have a true big bore rifle to back you up anyways. The 375 H and H and the 375 Ruger are both fine cartridges, but I personally prefer the 375 H and H because ammo availability is fantastic. And the variety of rifles chambered in it is much better than being stuck with the Ruger. Now, if you're an experienced hunter 
and not recoil sensitive, moving up to the 416s or even the 404 Jeffrey is a great option. The 416s and the 404 hit noticeably harder than the 375s do at the price of just a little bit more recoil. I really like the 416s. The 416 Rigby, the 416 Remington Magnum, the 416 Taylor, and the 416 Ruger all perform very well with moderate recoil behind them. But I personally prefer the 416 Remington Magnum because ammo, reloading components, and rifles chambered in 416 Remington Magnum are numerous and easy to get. The 416s shoot flat like the 375s do, but they also hit hard like the 458s do, but without the punishing recoil of the 458s. Out of all of the true big bores, basically rifles over 40 caliber, I think the 416s are the most versatile. But once again, if you feel more comfortable and confident shooting a 375, by all means, bring that. The 458s are absolutely proven killers on dangerous game. The 458 Win Mag and the 458 Lot are popular choices here. The 458 Win Mag has more recoil than the 416s, but really doesn't offer that much more performance than the 416s in my opinion. So I've really never been that impressed with the uh, the 458 Win Mag for the amount of recoil you get out of it. Now, the 458 Lot, on the other hand, is a real thumper. But the step up in the recoil department is huge with these. Ironically, I've actually seen 458 Lot ammo for sale in African gun stores. And it seems to be a pretty popular cartridge with many PHs over there. Now you can move up to the 460 Weatherby, 505 Gibbs, or even the 500 Jeffrey in a bolt action. But for the average hunter, for the occasional buffalo hunt, why do this? You know, a, a 416 is all you'll ever need to really rock a buffalo's world. You know, when you go bigger than this, you're simply inviting punishing recoil Less accuracy, um, you know, inferior ballistics, and huge muzzle blasts for no reason at all. So basically, when choosing, choosing a cartridge for your first buffalo hunt, you know, put the ego aside and be sensible. Your pH would rather that you made a perfect shot with 375 H&H than a gut shot with the 505 Gibbs. Now... Let's get down to a really important attribute about ammo availability. You know, traveling internationally with ammo is a very risky proposition, you know, particularly when you travel to third world countries. You know, what if you needed in an emergency to purchase ammo locally where you're hunting? You know, I go to gun stores all over the world when I travel just to sightsee and see what they have. You know, most of these stores only stock very common cartridges. You won't find 375 Ruger, 416 Rigby, 460 Weatherby, or 505 Gibbs on the shelves in Zambia and some other places. Also, you need to train and practice with your big bore bolt action. And, uh, you know, that could be very expensive. One round of 416 Rigby might cost you seven US dollars. You know, so you could spend almost $30 just shooting at a target four times. You know, that's ridiculous. And, you know, this makes it practical to shoot a cartridge that is readily available and cheaper to practice with, like the 375 and the 416 Remington Magnum. You know, the, the practical cartridges for your dangerous game hunt will be the 375 H&H, &H, the 416 Remington Magnum, and also the 458 Winchester Magnum. Those three cartridges in particular seem pretty prolific around the world if uh, ammo availability and the price of ammo are important to you.
Now we're going to move on to bullet selection for your big bore bolt action rifle. This is where things get really confusing. Most people will tell you to ask your pH which bullets they prefer. And this is indeed good advice, but be mindful that there's a problem. Many of these different pHs give different and conflicting advice on what bullets to use. For example, I talked to four pHs in Africa this last fall, planning this year's hunt to uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe. One pH told me not to bring nozzler partitions because uh, they don't hold together that well and that he preferred that I brought uh, Woodleys instead. You know, uh, another pH told me to bring Swift A-frames and solids with me because uh, he trusted them the most. Uh, you know, basically he wanted a, uh, a softer bullet that didn't over penetrate on that first shot. And he wanted me to follow up on my follow up shots with solids. So that was that pH's advice. Another uh, pH told me not to bring anything but Hornady bullets. He basically exclaimed that uh, all of the Hornady dangerous game bullets he's seen shot failed miserably. So he said to bring anything but those. And the last PHA I talked to, he told me to load everything Barnes TSX and not to worry about bringing solids. So, you know, that's four well-respected PHs giving me four totally different answers on what bullets to bring. You know, and why this confusion? Why is this the case? Well, it's simple. They all base their, rec their, their recommendations off of experience. You know, uh, you know, probably a little bit of bias thrown in too. But, you know, if you use guides in North America or Europe, you'll see basically the same thing happening. But uh, let me give you some of their logic here. Be mindful that some pHs hunt in areas where you'll be shooting bulls at a big herds. You know, and these pHs don't want you to use bullets like the TSX that might over penetrate on that critical first shot and wound another buffalo behind that one. You know, most of these pHs want you to make that first shot with a softer bullet that's unlikely to do collateral damage. You know, other pHs hunt in areas where they're most almost exclusively hunting dagaboys, basically old males that are separated from the herd or following some distance behind it. And these dagaboys tend to hang out in thick vegetation in nasty areas. And uh, they really rely on this vegetation for protection rather than the protection in numbers that the herd provides. You know, uh, pHs in these areas seem to tend to favor deep penetrating bullets like the TSX that can shoot through some brush and penetrate deep or all the way through the buffalo so tracking's easier. Other pHs, you know, they see a lot of bullets fail completely, you know, and like the pH who told me he hates the uh, Hornady dangerous game bullets. So it just depends on the area and the type of hunting they do too, uh, you know, but just be mindful, your pH gains a lot of his advice he gives you through experience. So I'm not saying to disregard their advice. In fact, you should probably follow it. So what's a good general rule of thumb to follow to uh, satisfy your pH on your hunt with bullet selection? Well, I actually have a safe answer for you on this. I've never, ever heard of a pH in Africa that wasn't impressed by the Swift A-frame. Truth be told, the A-frame really isn't my personal favorite bullet, but it works great. And it seems to be the only bullet in Africa that every pH likes. So contact your pH and tell him that you plan to use a Swift A-frame and ask if he's okay with it. Most likely he'll give you his approval and at most might also ask you to bring some uh, solids for follow-up shots. But, you know, pretty much the Swift A-frame is liked in Africa by everybody. Can't go wrong with that as your bullet selection. Now, if you do plan on bringing solids, 
make sure they're the same weight as your soft points and that they shoot to the same point of aim, point of impact. That way they, uh, they work as a good system together. So basically what a lot of pH want, what a lot of pHs want is they want you to make that first initial shot with a, uh, an expanding bullet. And then a lot of them want you to follow up with these non-expanding solids. You know, so in order to have a successful hunt, you and your pH need to be in sync with each other. Your pH needs to have confidence in you and in your gear. If your pH doesn't have confidence in your bullet choice, you know, that could put a bad aura around your hunt. Trust me on this. You may not think so, but that actually is a bad situation. You need to do everything in your power to prevent your pH from second guessing you or your gear. This is a dangerous game hunt and his life is on the line every day he spends out there with you. He has the right to demand that everything be perfect on the hunt and that goes for gear too. Most of these guys know other PHs that have died in the field hunting ga dangerous game with clients. So you need to give them a pass if they seem picky to you. This isn't a planes game hunt. You know, you're hunting an animal that will kill you in a heartbeat if it feels it needs to. This is serious business. For your hunt in Africa, you'll either buy a box of commercial ammo or you'll load your own ammunition. Dangerous game ammo is very expensive, sometimes over $150 for one box of 20 rounds. So loading your own ammo will save you a lot of money in the long run. But don't load your own big bore ammo if you're not an experienced and skilled reloader. The dangers of an overpressure round in these huge Magnum cartridges can be deadly. Not only from the rifle exploding in your face, but also from a, uh, a jammed casing that won't extract in the heat of the moment. You know, safari hunters know, safari hunters that load their own ammunition know not to load near maximum pressures. They know to always full length resize their brass for reliability and dirty conditions. You know, they know to make a proper crimp. You know, they know to never stretch the lifespan of brass in dangerous game cartridges. You know, loading dangerous game cartridges is no place to push limits or take risks. So if you're not an experienced reloader, I would not load dangerous game ammo. If you opt to buy commercial ammunition, well, you're in luck. We have some of the best commercially available big bore ammunition that's ever been made on the market today. The stuff that uh, Nosler and Swift and Barnes and Federal and Norma put out nowadays is some of the best commercial ammo ever made. So if you're not 100% confident in loading your own dangerous game ammo, commercial ammunition is great, albeit it's pretty expensive, it's still a great option. As you can see here, I have two different scope setups on these rifles. This one just happens to be a 375 h and H, and on this one I have it set up with a uh, 40 millimeter objective with a 1 to 12 power scope on it, and that's a Leupold VX6. And you can see this has got a longer 25 inch barrel on it, and I basically use this one for longer shots on big game. You know, I've, uh, I've actually shot a Gemsbach with this with a 250 grain TSX. Um, out to 250 yards. So this is a good performer out to longer ranges right here. And this just happens to be a Model 70 Alaskan, in case you're wondering. But uh, for most dangerous game hunting, you want a real low power scope like this. This is a 24 millimeter objective, uh, Leupold VX6, 1 to 6 power. And, uh, you know, normally I have this set at 1 or 2. While I'm out hunting in the bush, if it's real thick brush, I'll have this set at one. And a scope like this is super quick. I mean, I can use this set at one power with both eyes open. And uh, 
for your for most of your dangerous game hunting, you're going to want a scope like this. Also, in my previous video, you saw me talk about slings, and uh, I'm really not a proponent of these people that go to Africa and think they need to just uh, throw the rifle over their shoulder and hold the barrel and walk around and muzzle everybody. So, when you're going to Africa and hunting, please just bring a simple leather or a nylon two-point sling and put it on your rifle. You'll be better off for it. They're cheap. They're comfortable. If you don't want it on there, you could take it off and just uh, hold the rifle in your hands and walk around. But, uh, you know, just like with any honey, um, I highly recommend a simple leather or nylon two-point sling. Don't make it complicated. You also need a method to carry spare ammo for your big bore bolt action rifle. I'll always recommend these uh, dangerous game belts, otherwise known as culling belts, to carry your big bar ammunition on your dangerous game hunt. Basically, I also prefer these nylon loops over the leather loops, but uh, you know, everybody has a preference on that. Uh, you know, these allow very, very rapid acquisition of spare ammo in the heat of the moment, and you can even reach down and grab your ammo without even looking at the belt. So this is very convenient. And I highly recommend the uh, belts and products from Murray Custom Leather as well. First, let's talk about the bench rest. At a minimum, you'll need to use the bench rest to zero your rifle. If you load your own ammunition, you might also need to develop loads off the bench. Unfortunately, this has to be done on a bench rest system of some type. And shooting a big bore rifle off a bench rest is a very punishing experience. Felt recoil is two to three times more punishing while shooting from the bench than it is while shooting from the standing position. So, unfortunately, to a limited degree, this is a necessary evil. So what you're going to do first is... Before you even mount your scope on your rifle, you need to zero your backup iron sights. So it may take you two trips to the range or, you know, you could bring the stuff to set up your scope while you're at the range, which is what I do. But before you mount the scope on this, you need to zero your iron sights first because you might need these. On my big bore heavy recoiling rifles, I use a Caldwell lead sled to zero my sights. You know, I zero my iron sights first at 50 yards on all my rifles. And once the iron sights are zeroed, I install my scope and begin to zero my rifle with the scope on. Dangerous game rifles should have uh, quick detachable scope rings so you can rapidly remove your scope if it fails or you need or prefer to use iron sights in certain situations. Now about these Caldwell lead sleds, they kind of get a little bit of a bad reputation from people who either have never tried them, you know, like your typical internet commando, or people who aren't knowledgeable of how to use them. Basically, the complaint is that these things crack stocks. You know, they crack rifle wood rifle stocks because basically when you pull the trigger, um, the rifle can't do any type of movement. Well, that's just not the case if you use these things properly. The problem is a lot of the people that are cracking stocks are using 75, even 100 pounds of weight on these things. To You know, they're really weighing them down, so there's zero movement. Myself, I use a 25-pound weight, and the rifle moves just fine. There's play in the system, and it mitigates most of the recoil into my shoulder to make zeroing a rifle and doing load development with a heavy recoiling rifle at least bearable. Um... You know, I know some people go up to 50 pounds and they've never had any type of issues with it, but I would never go over 50. And for me, even when shooting a 458 lot with 25 pounds on the lead sled, I really don't have any issues. So um, in my mind anyways, if you're doing load development or zeroing uh, big bore rifles on any type of regular basis, these Caldwell lead sleds are worth their weight in gold. I mean, they're really going to save your shoulder, especially if you're a guy like me who's had shoulder injuries in the past 
you know, uh, still, I, you know, I don't mind shooting these things offhand, off the sticks, but these things will just punish the hell out of you shooting off the bench. So these are mandatory in my mind for load development and, you know, to zero your rifles. They come highly recommended by me. Now, after my iron sights and scope are zeroed, I'm done shooting off the bench rest for the rest of the hunting season. It's basically time to practice off the sticks and off hand shots. Before I go any further, we need to discuss safety. When you get to hunting camp in Africa, your pH will likely want you to verify zero on your rifles and, you know, maybe even give them a once over. But in reality, your pH isn't looking for uber accurate tiny groups around the bullseye like you think he is. What he's really watching is how you handle your rifle. PHs see enough people in their career handle firearms to know almost instantly how dangerous the hunter will be to him and to his staff. A good PH will size up his clients quickly and decide how much you'll trust them during the hunt. If you do not demonstrate good firearm safety in handling, your PH might decide to have you hang back while he and his trackers go into the bush and do the tracking of your buffalo without you while you wait. You know, after all, what PH wants a nervous client with bad safety practices pointing a loaded big bore rifle at his back while uh, chasing a wounded buffalo in the middle of nowhere? PHs have even been known to let clients, you know, to, to refuse to let clients carry a loaded rifle in the field after they demonstrate unsafe rifle handling. So don't be that guy. If you aren't fully familiar with uh, the basics of firearm safety, you know, the basic rules of firearm safety, you need to study them in depth until they're ingrained in your memory. If, uh, if you haven't taken a basic hunter safety course in your state, I highly recommend that you do before even thinking about hunting or training for a hunt. To most PHs, the client is the most dangerous animal in the bush. The safety of you and his staff are his number one priority. So you need to be squared away before you get to Africa. Since you'll be walking, in a single file line with a loaded gun while you're hunting, muzzle discipline is the number one issue a PH is gonna have. You know, your muzzle should never ever point at or sweep across any human being. A PH or anyone, including myself, will scold you if you point a loaded firearm at them or any firearm at them. You know, it not only shows carelessness, but a total disregard for human life and a complete lack of respect for the hunt. Also, don't be one of those guys that can't keep their damn finger off the trigger. Ironically, older guys seem to have this problem the most for some reason. If you aren't actually in the process of killing something, your finger should never be in the trigger guard. And remember, you never fire your rifle until your pH gives you permission to do so. And lastly, I always let my pH know the condition of my firearm. If I'm not gonna, you know, if I get out of the vehicle, and I'm loading it, I let my pH know that I'm loading my firearm. Uh, before I get back in the vehicle, I also unload my firearm and I let my pH check to verify that the chamber and the magazine are completely empty. A pH should always be aware of the condition of your rifle. You know, and even at that, you still always treat this rifle as if it's always loaded. There's some controversy between African and American professionals about how to properly run the bolt on a bolt action rifle after you take a shot. You know, but what they both do agree on is that the bolt should be ran hard to prevent short stroking. You know, one of the worst things you can do in the middle of a hunt is to short stroke the bolt and get a double feed or some other type of problem with it, some other type of malfunction. You have to move the bolt with authority. You know, it's good to practice the up, back, 
forward, down method. Up, back, forward, down. You know, don't be delicate with this bolt. Run it hard. Don't be afraid. Also, many folks teach all kinds of crazy hand motions for cycling the rifle bolt. You know, like... Don't bother with that. You know, in my opinion, just grab the damn bolt knob as hard as you can and run it like you hate it. You know, up, back, forward, down. That's all you really need to remember with that. And now to the controversy. You know, American professionals always teach that you should run the bolt with the rifle shoulder. You know, you take a shot, run the bolt. Take a shot, run the bolt. You know, but many African professionals think that you should unshoulder the rifle and run the bolt in the high ready position. Bang. And then back up. Shoot. Down. Back up. You know, the logic of the American technique is that the rifle is recharged and brought back in the action as quickly as possible, almost without skipping a beat. You know, and the rifle doesn't have to be reoriented to the target after the shot or after cycling. You know, the American method of doing it is the fastest and most efficient way to cycle a bolt, I think. The logic of the African method is that those really long bolts on dangerous game rifles can almost slap you in the face while you're cycling the bolt. You know, so out of fear, some people might risk, you know, run the risk of short stroking the bolt because it's coming close to their face. Therefore, to ensure that the bolt is run properly and so that they could physically watch the empty shell extract and the new cartridge feed, some African professionals unshoulder their rifles to cycle the bolt. You know, they basically fire, go into the high ready position, cycle the bolt, get back on target and fire. You know, personally, I like the American technique of running the bolt, you know, but pretty much as long as you demonstrate good firearm handling skills and run that bolt hard, I really don't think your pH will care what technique you use. For this portion of the video, I will be using my calling belt to uh, retrieve ammunition from. There's lots of different techniques for topping off your magazine or loading your rifle in, out in the field. You know, you should be fully aware, first of all, of how many rounds your magazine holds. You should know that before you even leave. You know, and uh, if you have a Winchester Model 70 Safari Express, it's probably going to hold, you know, one or two less rounds than, let's say, you had a, a CZ 550 Safari Magnum. So always be mindful of how many rounds your magazine will hold before you go out to hunt. You know, if you're out in the field and you're in the heat of the moment and you pull that trigger and it goes click instead of bang, you might be out of ammunition. In that case, you open up the bolt, visibly, visibly inspect the magazine in the chamber to make sure it's empty and there's no problems. And if that's the case, it's time to start loading your magazine up. Once you get it loaded up, rip the bolt forward and you're back in action again. Now, if you're out hunting and you just take a shot or two and you want to top off your magazine, you need to be fully aware how to do that, you know. Um, First of all, you need to realize that you probably have a round in the chamber already. So you're going to need to deal with that first. And you deal with that by pulling back, taking that chambered round off, reloading it back into the magazine, then grabbing ammo off your belt, topping everything off, ripping the bolt forward, put the rifle back on safe, and you're ready for action again with a fully charged magazine. So learning how to reload and top off your magazine in the field is something you need to go to the range and practice a lot because you don't want to be, you want to have that muscle memory. You don't want to be fumbling around with cartridges trying to load them in the field. It, it's a, be a huge waste of time if you don't know what you're doing. Never forget to practice and be well practiced. The goal of a dangerous game hunt 
is to not have to track a wounded animal. That's when thing, that's when dangerous game can become truly dangerous. This makes the first shot absolutely critical on your dangerous game hunt. A bad first shot puts the whole hunting party in danger because they now need to track a wounded animal. This is why practice is so damn important. Also, you need to research where you'll be hunting and ask your pH what the average shot distance is going to be. If you're hunting buffalo in, you know, coastal Mozambique, your average shot might be 100 yards or more. So, you know, you need a flatter shooting load and, you know, probably bigger optics to back that up. In parts of Zimbabwe, you might never get a shot over 30 yards. So slower loads and low power optics will probably rule the day there. In South Africa, it might be a mixed bag. You might have opportunities at all ranges. In reality, though, shot placement is so important with buffalo that pHs rarely have their clients shoot at a buff at anything over 100 yards. Plan to shoot at 100 yards or less if you're buffalo hunting. This is why I zero my rifles for buffalo hunting dead on at 50 yards and 100 yards. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be running this rifle. So you verify. It is completely unloaded and empty. Most of the time, that first shot will be taken off the sticks. But not always. So you need to practice for both shooting off the sticks and for offhand shooting scenarios. After that precisely aimed first shot, You need to be prepared to make a quick follow-up shot, you know, but if that buffalo runs, you need to quickly prepare to get off the sticks, pursue that buffalo, and maybe make a couple of offhand shots. You know, even though no two events play out the same, this whole sequence of events should be practiced to some degree. I start by setting up two targets, one at 75 yards and one out at about 25 yards. Initially, you should always clear your firearm and practice dry. You must get comfortable with using shooting sticks before you head to Africa. That's because all of your precise shots are going to be taken from these shooting sticks. You need to get your method of clearing your sling around the shooting sticks, setting your rifle on the V-notch in the shooting sticks, and getting your grip on the rifle figured out before you head to Africa you know, and have to learn how to do this under stress. It's better to practice this now. For the first drill, I like to set up that target about 75 yards away. You know, and the more difficult you make the shot and practice, that first precise shot, the better you'll be in the field. So set your scope on the lowest settings if you're using a scope before you start this drill. So at first you're going to approach the sticks while staying oriented towards your target. You're going to clear your swing, settle into the sticks, make sure your sights are lined up properly, take the rifle off of safe, slowly squeeze the trigger, and fire. Now remember, you're going to slowly squeeze that trigger. Don't slap the trigger like that because uh, even though you're out buffalo hunting in the bush and shooting off of sticks and not the bench. You know, this is a precise shot and good marksmanship skills still apply here. So, after that first shot, you're going to cycle the action. And put your, tar your sights right back on the target again. If your pH doesn't tell you to shoot, and remember you only shoot when your pH tells you to, if you have to get up, maybe pursue the buffalo into the bush, you're going to dismount the rifle from the sticks, put it back on safe. So once again, I'm going to approach the sticks while staying oriented towards my target. I'm going to clear my sling, settle into the sticks, align up my sights, take the safety off, and slowly press the trigger. Then I'm going to run the bolt and get back on him and be prepared for a second shot. 
you know, uh, after that shot, you need to cycle the action and get back on target as fast as you can, but don't shoot yet. You know, remember, you don't pull the trigger until your pH tells you to do so. If the buff just stands there and reacts slowly, your pH will tell you to do a quick follow-up shot again. But uh, if the buff disappears back into the herd or quickly darts back into the bush, you probably won't take a second shot yet. So it's time to move the rifle off the sticks, put the safety back on. If you've adjusted magnification up on the scope, at this time you're gonna turn the scope back down to the lowest setting and uh, you know, be prepared to uh, track your buffalo. The next scenario you need to practice for is offhand shots under stress while on the move. In this scenario, you need to move into position, line up your sights, take the rifle off safe, and take a quick offhand shot at the 25 yard target. After the shot, quickly cycle the bolt and prepare for another shot. So now that you've practiced for both scenarios, it's a good time to put it all together into a drill and incorporate probably a reload into it. So first, first we're going to get on the sticks, line up your sights, take the rifle off a of safe, and take a precise shot. Then aggressively cycle the bolt, get back on target. If another shot isn't necessary, you're going to remove the rifle, top off the magazine, charge it, put the rifle on safe, turn your scope back down if you have one on there, and begin tracking with your hunting party. So to practice for your offhand shots, you're basically going to move into position and imagine that your pH tells you to shoot. So you're going to align your sights flip the rifle off a of safe, acquire the target again, and fire an offhand shot at the target. Then aggressively run the bolt, get back on the target. If your pH tells you to shoot again, you shoot again, you run the bolt again. The action's over right there. You're gonna recharge the rifle, you're gonna reload, put it on safe. So to round it all off again, I'm gonna get on the sticks by clearing my sling Settling in, gonna line up my sights, take the rifle off a of safe, fire. Immediately run the bolt. If I'm not told to shoot again, I'm gonna get off the sticks, top off the rifle, load it, go on safe, and pursue the animal, okay? Once I'm out pursuing the animal, the pH tells me shoot, shoot, shoot. I'm gonna get back on, take the rifle off a of safe, take a shot. Run the bolt, he tells me to shoot again, shoot, run again, bull's down, I'm gonna reload, back on safe. You know, even though you're gonna run these drills a bunch of times with your dangerous game rifle, you know, you could also run them with uh, live ammo a bunch of times with a lesser caliber that's cheaper to shoot. I mean, let's face it, Every time you fire your 416 Rigby, it's about six or seven dollars a shot, you know, especially if you don't reload your own. So running these drills with a 223 or a 308 will save you tons of cash. But occasionally and definitely in the weeks leading up to your hunt, you need to run these drills live fire with only your dangerous game rifle. You know, you want your muscle memory intricately tied to this rifle. Now, there's many different types of drills you can run and ways to practice, but the bottom line is you need to learn to make a precise shot off the sticks and be able to perform good follow-up shots offhand. You know, adding in safety and reloading techniques to the drill should round things out pretty good. You know, don't go on your first buffalo hunt or any dangerous game hunt for that matter without lots of practice. One of the most important items you need to remember is that shooting is a diminishing skill. If you don't practice, you pretty much get bad at it. I have so many friends that are cops or in law enforcement and were excellent shots early in their career, but now it's pretty bad when we go out to the range. 
I also have a buddy that was a Marine designated marksman. And now it's pretty embarrassing when he goes out shooting. So, you know, I'm not trying to belittle these people, but I'm just trying to demonstrate that no matter how good at shooting you were in the past, if you don't continue training, you're going to lose it. So make sure you're in top form before you take that trip to Africa. Practice a lot. Buffalo rarely roam around places where people like to live. Outside of South Africa, you'll likely be in a very remote location with no power or phone reception. So you need to hold safety in the highest regard. As part of this, you owe it to your hunting party and to your prey to have your shit together before you even board that plane. You need to be proficient with your rifle, have every aspect of safe gun handling down, be in reasonable physical condition, and be prepared to follow instructions from your PH. Like I said before, I'm nowhere near an expert on dangerous game hunting, and I don't pretend to be an expert in any capacity. I'm just a guy like you that had a hard time finding information I needed and had to find out for myself or, you know, a lot of the time learn things the hard way. So try not to be too critical of me. I'm just learning just like you. I'm currently in the process of preparing for another trip to Zambia and Zimbabwe to hunt buffalo in a few months and decided to do a little video on the subject of big bore bolt action rifles. Hopefully some of you found it informative or you know at least thought provoking in some way. Again, thanks for watching my video and as always, good hunting.